All right, welcome everyone to the third Accelerate Tourism Marketing Meetup. Our session today is gonna to be growth during lockdown, positive stories from tour, tour operators around the world. So I uh, hope you're in the right place. We welcome you all here. We've got a lot of new people today. So just wanna introduce you a little bit to the meetup before we get started. So the whole goal of, of Accelerate Tourism is to be a virtual meetup for business leaders serving the tourism industry. We plan to hold weekly meetups during the lockdown period. Uh, then we're gonna be moving to mon monthly once everybody gets out because you're all gonna be busy running your tours at that point. Um, our focus is on sharing tourism marketing ideas through guest speakers and open discussion. Uh, so hope you're all ready to join in, in on the discussion today. Just to help put this in perspective, again, our goal is to help each other improve our businesses as we swap practical marketing ideas and strategies through regular virtual meetups. Um, just some quick ground rules here. Uh, stay on topic, uh, no promotions or sales pitches, be kind and courteous, and respect each other's privacy uh, with the group both here and in, in our private Facebook group. All right, so just want to uh, introduce the topic here and introduce our guest speaker. Uh, topic again, growth during lockdown, positive stories from tour operators around the world. I know right now is just a very interesting time. Um, you probably similar to me, it's been a bit of a roller coaster here over the last few weeks, both just kind of being shocked about the situation and everything that's happening, and then a little bit of optimism uh, with, uh, at least here in the US, I don't know as much about the other countries you're from with government support and funding and just everybody rallying around together. I've seen a general increase in optimism. And then just here in the last 24 hours or so with, with some announcements about potentially elongated lockdowns and um, some of the funding mechanisms being tapped out. I know it's been a even just an interesting 24 hours, but I've been encouraged by the seeing tour operators just really rallying together, seeing the way that people are pivoting their businesses or finding ways to create revenue or at least keep their audience engaged and help each other out over these times. And for this session, our, our whole focus is going to be on uh, like the title says, positive stories from tour operators around the world. I'd like to introduce Chris Torres um, from uh, Glasgow, Scotland. He runs uh, the Tourism Marketing Agency. He's also the host of the Digital Tourism Show, which is a very popular podcast. Uh, Chris has been working in marketing for close to 30 years now and specifically focusing on the tour and activity sector for the last 14, 15 years. I've been following him for a while. Uh, he's got a lot of great information to share. He interacts a lot with uh, people just like you guys uh, all over the world. And I was particularly impressed by an article he published the other day with just 25 different stories of positive things that people are doing. And so I uh, invited him to join us today, share a few of those stories, and maybe share some tips and resources along the way with us too. So Chris, welcome. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. You bet. So Chris, my first question for you, uh, just with, I'm sure you're kind of knee deep in, in interacting with your customers and tour operators uh, through other ways that you connect with people. Just tell us a little bit, kind of, uh, how are the people you're interacting with dealing with the situation right now? Uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question though. It's, it's been a little bit of a mixed bag as you can, uh, as you can imagine. Um, though I've, uh, for those who don't know, I, I opened up my diary to speak to as many tour operators and activity providers as I could, um, giving sort of free uh, sort of hour consultations. So th this is people other than my own customers, etc. So I just opened up because I wanted to help as many people as possible and get more of an insight into what they're feeling and, and how they're how they're coping throughout this crisis. So as I say, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. Um, there's a lot of positivity out there and that's what we're going to come on to later. But um, as you can imagine, there's a lot of people really scared of what's going to happen, the uncertainty of what's going to happen. And then fortunately, there's a lot of businesses out there that just simply won't survive. Um, that's just, uh, it's unfortunately what the, this part of position we're in at the moment. But there is a lot of businesses out there, as I say, who are, um, taking the bull by the horns, as, as you say, and um, setting up really good initiatives in terms of how they're going to become out stronger at the end of this crisis. And we will come out the end of the crisis. Um, we just don't know when that will be at the moment. Um, but they are some of the stories I've heard from have been truly inspiring, and it's uh, hopefully we'll share some of them today. Sure. Uh, I know when we spoke, uh, you mentioned you've been sharing some uh, kind of a, you have like a top 10 list, if you will, of, of tips that you're sharing with the people that you work with. Would you mind sharing those with us? 
Yeah, the top 10 tips. So um, I'll go through them briefly. Um, but um, so the top 10 tips are, first one is to communicate. And, and I mean, communicate with your customers. One of the reasons why I, I mentioned that, it seems a given, uh, um, but one of the reasons why I mentioned that is some people were scared to even speak about COVID-19 to their customers. And that's one of the first things you should really be doing in terms of reinforcing and, and reestablishing those communications with your customers and giving them reassurance. Um, the second one is, this is now the time to be creating lots of good, valuable content, um, whether it's through video or written content. You know, hopefully we never go through this again, but you have literally got uh, a captive audience at the moment, all sitting at home, all wanting, or all surfing the web more, looking for inspiration, looking for things they wish they could be doing or want to be doing once we come out of this. So give them something to read and give them something to inspire to or to watch. Um, search internet optimization is another thing to be doing just now. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of businesses will just give up and, and stop all forms of marketing. But if you keep producing lots of content and you keep optimizing your website, two or three months down the line, when we come out of this, you'll have a better optimized site. You might raise in the rankings uh, and that will give you a stronger foothold going forward as well. Uh, other things that we've been looking to try and generate money now is informing our customers in terms of creating or setting up gift cards and gift card initiatives or vouchers that people can buy now uh, for, for future. It's a great way for birthday gifts and anniversaries. Now remember people are going through this crisis who are celebrating birthdays, who are celebrating anniversaries, who are just had uh, just given birth to a baby, but are unable to celebrate that with family and friends because of the lockdown. So this is a good opportunity to say to those people, well, here, you might not be able to celebrate now, but celebrate with us further down the line. Um, so things like gift cards could help with that. Um, one of the other things we're suggesting is subscription payments. Um, so if you are, say, a multi-day tour company uh, and you, you people aren't necessarily buying now, but you're maybe focusing on tours for next year, set up subscription payments so they could pay over a longer period, making it easier for them, but giving you some extra cash flow as well. Um, and I know we maybe come onto this a little later, but focus on staycations. The local market will be the predominant market for the next 12 months. Um, and I know we'll come on to more of that maybe in a second. Um, early bird 2020. Um, although I do believe things will pick up later in 2020, um, early bird for 2021 is th things you should maybe be focusing on now. Just think as if 2020 is dead in the water. Think about the, the, for next year and start promoting things for next year. Don't cancel, postpone, says what it's, uh, it's self-explanatory. Um, if you can, do anything to postpone bookings for later in the year or next year, do so um, and try to keep that cash flow going. Focus on direct. This is a big subject and it's going to be, uh, I can't go into everything at the moment, but I've spoken to lots and lots of operators who are unfortunately 60, 70, even 95% reliant on online travel agents. So they're relying, uh, they have no say on their cancellation policies. They have, they're, they're further away from the revenue streams because the OTAs are more in charge of that. So this is why going forward, you really need to start building direct channels. Without that, you are you're, you're not going to survive this crisis or any other crisis that's going to come up going forward. And I think a lot of tour operators are starting to realise that now. So that's why I say, if you, if you don't already, start to build up really strong direct channels. And thinking a little bit out of the box, and this is what we'll come on to with some of the inspirational stories, and it's thinking about what you can do to create new products, create new opportunities coming out of this crisis. Uh, and again, some of the stories that we'll, we'll share shortly will hopefully highlight that aspect as well. Great. Thank you, Chris. And um, just for, uh, I think everybody on the call probably understands OTAs, but online travel agencies, things like TripAdvisor, Booking.com, Expedia, as well as some of the more localized or, or niche um, uh, agencies would be examples of that. And I think you make a great point there, Chris, with focusing on direct. I mean, I, I, that's one thing I've appreciated about you when I've uh, listened to you is, not you're not anti OTA like don't participate with them but you're also not you know let's not uh, d become wholly dependent upon their platforms as well yeah exactly so. and I don't understand why it happens no people use OTAs can get you out to a larger audience uh, and get your products out there quicker but what tends to happen is people fall into the trap of seeing the revenue coming in and everything's nice everything's rosy but then when something like this happens they go oh right okay this is uh, I don't have a say on 
my cancellation policies I say I'm not I don't have, have um, access to my customers data especially the stuff that for the bookings that are still to happen further down the line all these other things as well you, know, you should get to a stage in your business where you're maybe 80% direct 20% OTA and be in a position where if a, if a trip advisor or get your guide was to shut down tomorrow you would still have a business to operate so this is where I'm seeing an urging to operate this is where they need to get to um, but I understand why why they fall into that trap We mentioned you have some specific stories to share, and that was one of the things that inspired me to invite you on here. Uh, would you mind sharing a few of those? Of course, yeah. So I've had the privilege of speaking to many operators, as I say, all over the world. Um, some customers, but a lot not customers. Um, and, and a few of them have, have, have really been truly inspiring. So one of the first ones I will speak about is a company in Auckland. Uh, so uh, so cool. uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, obviously they have been hit hard with the cruise ships and everything else, so you can imagine what's happening there. Um, but Local Food Adventures, uh, Lauren there uh, has a great business. Um, she does food tours, uh, hence the name. Uh, and some of the initiatives that she has been putting out has been great. You know, she's creating, one of the things I put forward to her um, was why don't you create a, a, a virtual tour online? Um, this could be something, it's something like ten dollars maybe to 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 purchase. It's very low cost, but but the the one thing that you're doing is is the restaurants and the establishments that she takes people out on tour with, um, they're still open in terms of delivering food to others in the local area. So why not use that facility to deliver food to people uh, who purchase one of your tours locally that food gets delivered to them but then you can do a zoom meeting like we are doing just now and delivering that experience online talking about the food that they're trying talking about the establishments that they came from and the history behind that so things like virtual tours can be uh, an optional revenue stream uh, to provide and now with more and more people creating zoom accounts and being online it's getting easier to do something like that but she's also created like uh, a food box so people can actually pay for a, a food box again from the food from the different establishments and that is delivered to 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 our customers um within the local area uh, and one of the things that we've created for her as well is a cookbook so again people are stuck at home they are uh, they are maybe sick of staying at the same four walls uh, all the time so why she, so she created a cookbook of recipes again from all these different establishments to raise their awareness so it isn't just for her it's for the partners that she uh, she, she has as well and helping those businesses and creating recipes from them. Those recipes are in the book. This will be available to download, I believe, next week on the website. Uh, and then people can download that, try those recipes at home. And then she has a little competition in there where if they post up um, the photographs of the, the food that they've, they've tried to create, even the disasters, and then having some humor around that as well, um, that she'll send out a, a, a food box or a gift card or you'll be able to get a free tour uh, further down the line once restrictions have lifted. So she's trying to think a little bit how she can not just only help her business and help her customers do something at home uh, and still interact with her business, but also help the partners that she has and, and the establishments that she has in that area as well. So it's just a great little way of still being able to contribute to the tours and activities in a, at a, a local level. Um, one of the other ones, um, which is just a, a, a truly inspiring company anyway, uh, as a company called Invisible Cities here in Scotland. Now, for, for those who don't know who Invisible Cities are, um, she, she runs a company that helps homeless people become tour guides. Um, so you know, it, it's really helping them reestablish themselves back into the local communities. And the tour guides actually create the tours themselves. So uh, it's, it's tours round about the local area, giving history about the local area, et cetera. And they are, they are truly outstanding. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing business. So she is creating a few initiative, initiatives in terms of uh, helping her tour guides because, again, because of the, the sort of fracture, uh, sort of fragile nature that, that, that they may be in. So one is obviously creating something like a, a just giving page for, fund, for fundraising. Uh, and she's actually had quite a lot of uh, uh, donations on that purely to, and it's all going to the guides to help them throughout this crisis. But she's also got some of the guides creating virtual tours as well. Uh, so people can buy into that. One of the guys will go onto a Zoom call again, do a virtual tour online. There's downloadable guides for children as well. So there's information sheets and those sheets are a little bit about history and things that they can color in and, and, and do competitions with. So it's trying to, again to bring in the communities in the local areas, uh, not just in Scotland, but in other parts of the UK to 
keep in touch with that brand, but also help the homeless guys that they that she tries to help out as well. So it's, it's really inspiring what she's trying to do with that, as well as through gift cards and other initiatives as well. So Invisible Cities is is, is one of the ones out there who's really taking taking the initiative and trying to do a lot of things uh, online virtually, as well as uh, helping out the guys that she help that she helps the homeless people that she helps. Um, but another one in terms of humour, um, again we're all we all can do with a little bit of humour at the moment and, and have a laugh. Uh, there's a company in Australia uh, called Go West. Um, his tour guides, they had to, obviously, um, we have a thing here where we can furlough uh, our, our, our staff in terms of they don't actually work for the company, but they get paid by the government. Uh, I know that'll be different from other destinations. So one of the tour guides, just as a bit of fun, um, decided to do a, a tour of his back garden um, uh, and create a video of that. Um, it was it was funny. Um, it actually became sort of semi-viral, getting shared around um, the various platforms and social media, etc. So doing things like that, just adding a little bit of humour into people's lives can help massively. Um, know more about your brand, keep people informed about your brand, but also giving them something to watch and see and do and laugh at. That again, we're all stuck at home. We're all looking for things that we wish we could be doing and things like this can just help massively with that as well. Um, and lastly, the other one that I can think of is a company called uh, Leon Wine Tastings. So that is a company uh, in Italy. So one of the worst hit places in, uh, in Europe. Um, what's happening over there is just incredible. Um, it's heartbreaking, um, but she, she offers wine t tasting tours. Uh, and again, what she's doing is obviously people can't meet up, they can't try out the wine. So she's saying, bring your own bottle. So anyone can bring their own bottle, tell her in advance what that bottle is in the wine. She'll go off and do some research, find out what great varieties it uses, where it came from, etc., etc. And then again, doing a Zoom meeting uh, online, we'll talk about those wines as they're tasting them, give tasting notes, talk about the history, talk about the, the great varieties, etc. But again, doing it online. So this is what I'm loving about what's happening in the industry at the moment. Yes, there are businesses out there who who feel that they can't do anything. They feel that they they, they are maybe stuck in a rut. But if you just think a little bit out the box. Yes, it might, all these little things might not generate you lots of revenue and lots of business, but it might be enough to help you survive through this and, and allow you to you know, kickstart your business again when we come out of this crisis. Uh, and the initiatives that some of these people are doing through food boxes, through virtual tours and other sort of initiatives are, are, are truly inspiring, to be honest. And it's great to see so many operators just trying to think out the box and seeing what they can do to survive this crisis. Uh, and there's many, many other stories as you saw in that article of, of, of what people are doing um, and it's truly truly incredible great yeah for those of you as we transition into the discussion part of this um, for those of you who are interested in hearing more of those stories uh, chris published those on a blog article that we shared in our facebook group so uh, i encourage you to check that out and uh, be inspired by 20 plus other stories that uh, we didn't have the opportunity to cover here today mm -hmm. So um, there's, actually, there's actually one, if you don't mind, uh, it just came to mind yeah, very, 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 very briefly. Um, it's actually a, a company here, uh, in, well, down in London. Um, and this is, this is a little bit, again, thinking out the box, but not necessarily to the benefit of their own business. So it's a company called uh, Visit London Taxi Tours. Um, name suggests that they take people out on tours of London within a, a black taxi, the traditional taxi within, within London. Um, so what they're doing is they have their own uh, tour guides and the staff who drive those taxis are actually taking NHS and medical workers out around uh, the cities to take them to the various hospitals, but also to go around the city to make sure that homeless people uh, are taken care of, they're putting into temporary accommodation uh, and helping out with that way. So again, that, that, that doesn't necessarily affect their business and they're not making money with it but they're helping the local communities. And that's, that's just inspiring to sort of see, you know, they're taking the time out, they're, they're putting their own risks, uh, the life, uh, life at risks um, with getting the virus by helping out the medical staff and taking people off the streets and putting them into the temporary accommodation. So again, it's a thinking a little bit out of the box and what can you do? If you're an operator who has a fleet of vehicles that are just sitting there doing nothing, is there something that you can do to help the local communities just now in terms of medical staff or getting food to people who are in need who can't get out, especially those that are maybe homeless or, 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 or older, you know, older communities who just can't get out? What can you do who can help your local communities in the long run? Yeah. 
That's good. Uh, our session last week, Chris was on social media and we talked about their some, kind of some similar uh, concepts of things that you can do to help your user base or help other peers or help um, affected groups like the healthcare workers, for instance, those are one, just opportunities to do good, but also yeah. uh, opportunities to, to um, get yourself out there in a non-promotional way. People really aren't in a buying mode right now, obviously, uh, but people are, as you said earlier, wanting to consume content. Mm -hmm. um, so those are some great, thank you for the tips and for the stories. Not all. So, Not all. Just an FYI, I, uh, I, I did drop the link to that blog article in the chat. Um, so if you're interested in checking that out, you can either get it on the Facebook page or if you want to right now, it is available for you to copy and paste yeah. in the chat. Yeah, and if anyone who, who reads through that article um, wants to get in touch with any of those companies, any other operator, feel free. They will be happy to speak to you uh, and give them give you more ideas and thoughts on what they've done to, to get through this crisis. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. As we, as we transition into the discussion part, uh, Sam's going to be monitoring chat and pulling uh, questions out from the group, and he'll be uh, field, or raising those questions here for, for us, Chris, and, and for the group at large. Uh, in some cases, it may be someone from the group that would be better to answer the question. Um, sure. So we just encourage you guys to type questions in chat. And then as we see your questions, uh, Sam will either read them aloud or, or ask you to unmute and, and read your question. Um, while we're getting ready to do that, I have a starting question for you, Chris, um, which is I heard you mention in your stories and in your article a lot about virtual tours. And I'll admit I'm a little skeptical, um, I don't mind admitting that, um, that there's, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into that. And it seems to me, um, I guess what I'm, what I really want to ask you is, are people really paying for those right now? Is that, um, I see a lot of people doing a lot of video, which is awesome. And you mentioned that. I've been curious though to hear, it sounds like you're seeing people actually have success with selling those virtual tours. Yeah, they are. Uh, again, it all really depends on the content that you, you have out there. And if, uh, at the end of the day, you know, people, as I say, are, are looking for things to do, read, watch, etc. while they're stuck at home. Um, a virtual tour really doesn't take much effort to set up. Anyone can set up a Google Hangouts or a Zoom or a Skype or something like that and give people the link to it and, and have people join, join them in that conversation. Um, so whether that's you do that for free or offer it for something like $10 or $20 or whatever you want to do, um, it's all about storytelling at the end of the day. You know, in my opinion, the best storytellers in any business are the tour guides. They are the ones who are doing this day in, day out, normally day in, day out, with your own customers. So they should be the ones who are, are, who are experts, expert storytellers. So why can't they, what they're doing in front of their customers, why can't they do that in video form? It's just like speaking to a, a, someone else. It's, unfortunately, they're just not physically there. They're just at the other end of a camera. But it's the same principle. So it's as long as you have a good story to tell uh, and it's, it's an inspirational uh, experience that you can share online, uh, I don't see why anyone can't quickly set up a virtual tour. It doesn't take a lot, a lot of effort. Even if your booking platform doesn't allow for for, for booking up a virtual tour, well, set up a PayPal button, put that on the web page, and say virtual tour. Click here, buy now. Get people in and, and do it that way. You have a set date and time that you're going to do it. There's so many easy ways you can you can set up a virtual tour, and it's, it's a lot easier than what you think. It's just it's just about you presenting yourself and sharing that story online. Yeah, I think that would. Uh, so kind of let me interpret that a little bit. Um, I think where that would really be a, a legitimate possibility would be people who. Uh, the idea of storytelling is huge because that is like, you could just go to a, a destination and you could peruse it yourself. You could have a, you know, a paper guide, but when you have that expert who can not just, you know, say, here's the information, you know, have fun. They can present it in a way that is super engaging and that you have, you have this kind of, you kind of become part of the immediate story as they lead you through uh, you know, some sort of, you know, tour of an area of a museum of, um, you know, something like that, something where uh, you're not, where people would come, like, this would be, okay, this makes sense for people, for uh, um, businesses that, you know, people come to your location and you take them, they have to go through some sort of 
um, physical experience, you know, where they're looking at something, where they're maybe reading something and they're going from place to place to, to get some more information. Um, you know, I think in the, our area, the one thing that really comes to mind is we're near a pretty famous uh, battlefield from the Civil War in Gettysburg. And, you know, I don't think we have anybody from Gettysburg right now on on the call, but I could see this absolutely being something that, you know, I would pay five, ten dollars to to jump on a Zoom call as they take you around the battlefield and and tell you little things, and you actually get to interact with that person and whoever else is on the door. Um, so I don't think it's. I think we have a lot of people on the call right now that are. They don't necessarily offer that where they're going around and and giving a whole tour, but you know maybe there's some. Uh, I know there's at least one or two people on the call who do literally that, um, but maybe some of our, our other uh, people on the call it, with some tweaking and some real good, real creativity, they could create an experience that would be worth that type of value. Yeah, and if you don't mind, I can add to that. I'm going to go slightly off on a tangent here, but um, but if you are, if you start doing virtual tours and you start getting used to that format, uh, you no know, talking on camera with 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 lots of other people, no, and, and this is this isn't far away. What I'm about to say, you no, know, that automated tours and and tourless or, or tour guideless tours in terms of automated vehicles and driverless vehicles uh, are going to be here within the next five years and big time. So if you can imagine that a place where you have a tour guide sitting in front of a camera, talking to other people uh, and, and who are in all the other vehicles, who the vehicles are driving people around to take out a tour, but you have one tour guide talking to every one of those people who are out in, in that vehicle. It's similar to what we're doing just now. It's just that they are mobile. So this will get you used to the new norm, which will be in five years time um, when it comes to auto autonomous vehicles. So getting used to this type of thing now will set you up for when this comes uh, comes to the fore. And I, could, I think that would be applicable for people who don't even offer that now, but do have a, a knowledge. I know we have a lot of people here from uh, local bed and breakfasts and things like that. Um, and those people all have a, you know, it's a hyper local area that they represent and, and sort of the surrounding area too, but they are experts in, hey, what, what's interesting around this area? And for you to be able to offer that type of experience you know, that if you can begin to work that in, you know, for some of those things that would be coming down the road, that would be totally appropriate. You become a guide um, in, as, in addition to, uh, you know, uh, an innkeeper. Yeah, and if you think about it just now, you know, if, you, if you were to launch a, a virtual tour just now um, and you had a tour that could be aimed at families with young children, though know, being a, being a parent myself, who me and my wife working from home and have a 10-year-old and a 4-year-old always wanting your attention or homeschooling and things like that, you're always looking for things for them to do to give you, <laughs> to give you a little bit of peace and quiet for, for, to, so you can get on with your work for a little while. So if you can run a tour that can inform children uh, and give them something to, to entertain them for an hour or so, I'm sure parents would love to spend 5 or $10 on that. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Fair point. I would do that. Cool. Sam, do we have any questions from the group? Yeah. So the first one I have here um, is going back to uh, some of our conversation around um, the OTAs, but also around, well, there's kind of two questions. One is um, there was somebody who mentioned uh, I believe it was Brenda Miller. Uh, Brenda had a comment about uh, they actually have, with the, with OTAs, they have a condition in there where they don't collect until um, the, you know, their guest actually arrives on site. So that's, Brenda, I don't know if you want to add anything to or say anything uh, to the group here about that. I feel like that's something, um, if people don't know about it, they probably should. And that's something that they should review, especially for the future. So is this the, the customer details that they don't get until the, the tour happens? Is this, is this what the question was? Yeah, and Brenda, I did just, you were muted. If oh. I just uh, unmuted you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, um, I was 
actually just responding to Nicole um, that we didn't have to worry about reimbursements, fortunately, um, because we just, we don't collect until the customer actually comes. So that is an option that you can do through Expedia. Um, and uh, so that's something, you know, people can look at if they want to, but um, her, her comment was about having a hard time with the postponing tactic, which, you know, we've tried to encourage guests to come back later, but at this point with everything up in the air, it's hard to know a date that people could actually postpone till. Mm -hmm. So um, um, that was basically what I was expressing. Mm -hmm. I think it does depend on the type of product that you have. Um, though if you are a day tour, um, most people will be arriving at a destination for that specific time period. So a day tour is harder to postpone because because they're probably uh, having to cancel their flights and everything else coming for that week or that those few days they're going to be in your destination. But if you're lucky enough, uh, lucky enough to run a multi-day tour company you have a better chance of postponement. Uh, we, we have a customer in Ireland um, who, as you can imagine, most of his customers come from America. Um, you know, Americans love Ireland in terms of you know, a lot of rich history there with, um, with families and, and heritage, etc. Um, and he has managed to postpone 95% of his bookings um, uh, to, to further down the line. So it can be done. It's, it, it'll be a mixture of when those dates were going to happen, the, the, the cost price of, of, of and his, his, his products aren't cheap, um, so, but people were still willing to postpone them and do them later. Um, but also just, you know, uh, his, his, the way he talks to customers and his sales online, he phoned every single customer, spoke to them on the phone, sort of says, no, look, if you want to cancel, we're happy, we'll give you a refund, but we can postpone you and bring you out on a date further down the line. And like I say, uh, in fact, it was actually 98% did. Uh, so 98% managed to postpone when only 2% cancelled. I think, and I don't know if there's, if people see a difference in this, um, but I do see there, I do see there's a, an opportunity, and if you want to call it postponing, uh, that's fine. Um, but just instead of fully reimbursing, being able to reimburse in the form of a gift card or something like that, where, you know, They've obviously booked in the first place. That means that they've wanted to come. I, I actually view it being able to help somebody, you know, not just reimburse, which I feel like can sometimes be a knee jerk reaction, but if you can reimburse them in the form of a gift card where they can come back and book anytime. And you can even give, I think one or two people mentioned something about um, uh, offering some sort of incentives to, to either rebooking or taking I was going to say that. Uh, and stuff uh, like that. Yeah, I actually, I think that. that's yeah. a great tactic. If you can talk about that a little bit, Chris. Yeah, so, and I just noticed Justin there has a comment about giving incentives. So, yes, exactly. Um, no, I would rather see companies trying to postpone and offer added value to a product, even if it means you're going to break even on that product, but just to keep that customer and keep that money within your, within your cash flow and within your revenue. That's what you need to do. Um, they, your customers will love you for it. They will give you great reviews when they, when they do come over and everything else. You've added this extra value just to try and keep that customer and appease them. So anything that you can do to give additional incentives to that and additional value to that product, um, even if it doesn't cost you lots of money and you still make a, a profit from it, then it's well worth doing it if it means that they'll postpone. So any incentives that you can do, if that's giving them an extra stop on a tour or giving them a, a meal at the end of one of the days or something no, something along those lines. Even when it comes to gift cards, if you're selling gift cards at the moment, if you're selling, say, a $50 gift card, sell it at $50, but make the value $80, $100, just to make people buy into that. And the thing about gift cards is a large proportion of people who buy gift cards don't actually use them. So you still have that money. Uh, and, yeah, and I think bank. the average is like um, what fifty percent. Yeah. Fifty percent. So, so by doing so, you're you're probably going to you know, give out the same amount you're going to give out anyway because so many people don't don't use them. So add add value onto things. Don't discount. I hate discounting. Never discount um, as much as you can help it. No, this is not the time to dis discount anyway. So add value to things. Don't discount. Hmm. 
I think that's a good tip. I know one of the questions that came up on our call last week was just kind of as we look to the future and things coming back, how aggressively are we going to have to pursue people? You know, are we going to have to lower our rates in just to get people in the door? I think your concept of adding more value as opposed to discounting is an interesting one. Um, if we can increase the true value or perceived value of the product, then the, the price becomes a lot less of an issue to begin with. And yeah, I, I truly I believe most people that are booking a tour, it's based on an experience anyway, not on the actual price. Exactly. And people, I think, now that nowadays tend to switch off to 10% discounts and 15% discounts. They see it all the time. But if you actually say to someone, I'm going to give you this piece of value, and that value may be worth less than the 15% discount or the 10% discount, but it's, it's the thought of getting something extra is what people will buy into. That's from my experience anyway. I put your 10 tips up here, Chris, just to see if uh, it would remind anyone of questions that they might have. So just again, out to the group, um, what questions do you have or what ideas have, what things have you seen uh, that maybe Chris didn't touch on that you think the group could hear from? They don't have to be questions. It can also be ideas or, or just uh, discussion questions that you want to throw out here. I think while yeah, people... Sorry, Sam. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh, I've just seen a question there. Can you talk more about subscriptions? Um, yeah, so subscriptions are, again, more so if you're multi-day, um, but if you have a product that's of high value and it's something, and I can maybe come back onto this in a second, but, and it's something if you can book something in advance, whether that's later in 2020 or next year in 2021, and it's something of higher value, which most multi-day tour companies, uh, sort of price tickets are. So you can, rather than having your customers, which normally happens is pay a larger deposit, and then they maybe pay another one or two payments at various milestones. Why not break that down into six, 12 months monthly payments and make it more a subscription-based model? What this does is, because what's going to happen is when we come out of this, because of the way the economy will be and because of people, you know, unfortunately, being out of work or not being able to work or so, uh, or so forth, people will have less money to spend but they still will want to travel and want to explore when we get out of this. No, they'll just want to go somewhere because they have been stuck in their locations and stuck in their homes for so long. So being, by being able to have something to look forward to and give them, giving them the option to pay a smaller amount but over a longer period could benefit them, but also benefit you in terms of generating cash flow now and a regular cash flow for the next six to 12 months. Um, I don't see why a subscription-based model can't work predominantly for the multi-tour. Uh, multi data uh, companies. So kind of just to jump off of that, um, one thing that we were talking about before we jumped on the call is kind of the, the projection of what this is going to look like as far as um, the process of kind of getting back to 2019 levels. Mm. Um, and we were talking about how you know, what that kind of looked like for, and you've mentioned it already, um, you know, travel is going to be restricted in some way. Uh, what that's going to look like, we don't know. We can only speculate, um, you know, whether or not in the States it's going to be restrictions between uh, general areas or restrictions between states. International, it's definitely going to be restricted uh, in some way, shape, or form. So that really leaves the opportunity for your local market and the local market hasn't always been the pure focus of um, a lot of people. Now, I think a lot of people on this call uh, who are from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, or the general kind of tri-state area, uh, that might be a little bit different. Um, but I think there's, you know, there's always that, uh, you know, we feel like we can hit our local market pretty hard whenever we want to. Well, I think right now that's where the opportunity is. And we talked a little bit about how, um, you know, after this whole thing is over, you know, if we're in this for a year, two years, as we, you know, go through the phases to get back to normal, um, does, in the end, focusing on meeting the needs of your local market, uh, does that end up being a good thing in the long run? Just thought we could get talk about that a little bit on, on the call with everybody else, Chris. 
Yeah, for sure. I'll give you a brief overview of what I think is going to happen. Um, again, this changes week by week, week, month by month. But from what I'm seeing and from the stats I am seeing, uh, I believe that most destinations by around July, August will be out the worst of this. Um, but certainly from August all the way through to middle of next year, um, the, the focus is going to be on the staycation market, the local markets. Again, people will have less money to spend. There will be restrictions on, on flights and uh, especially international travel until a vaccine is created. Um, so I, I believe that yeah, if you don't already, you need to start thinking now about creating products for the local market. What can you do at a local level to, gener to create tours and products for the local market? And we don't mean within your immediate vicinity. You know, if you are uh, lucky enough to be in a state where you have other states around you and uh, close by, those are your local market. Um, so think about what you can do, but certainly the local market is going to be huge. No, you mentioned the arrival um, uh, stats. No, they, they predict, and again, this could change, but they predict um, it will be 2023 before we get back to 2019 levels. So it's going to take two or three years before we get back to where we were in 2019. And that's if coronavirus doesn't come back or some other crisis doesn't happen. So um, we always have to plan for the worst. Anyone who doesn't have a, a crisis management plan in the business needs to have that in place. Um, if the worst was to happen, how are you going to get out of this? If this same thing again was going to happen, how are you going to get out of it? But you have to think for at least for the next 12 months, the local market is certainly going to be the strongest market. Yeah, and I think, you know, I'm, a, I'm an optimist by nature, but a realist by necessity, I guess. Um, so I, I do think it, I think maybe in the long, like we are definitely talking about in the long run, I see, you know, if you can meet the needs of, of your, like you said, kind of in a lot of, in our area is that, you know, the surrounding states, um, and a lot of us have really been focusing on that. Um, but maybe there's, there's even more that we can do. I was talking to one of our clients uh, yesterday about um, actually, well, you're, I'm going to say uh, giving discounts, but it, let's just call it adding incentives or adding value, <laughs> um, adding value by discounting <laughs> um, to actually uh, to literally geographical locations. There's a pretty major theater um, in our area that, uh, actually has done this for a very long time that if you are a Pennsylvania resident, you have the opportunity to show up at that theater a half an hour before call time and um, uh, before will call or whatever. And you can purchase a discount at a pretty heavily, a uh, ticket at a pretty heavily discounted price. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are the types of things that, uh, you, know, you know, adding value to that local market in a way that, even in a way that's sort of like a rallying call, I think is, you know, you can kind of add that on top of it. That's, you know, like we're, the, the thing that you might hear all over the place is, you know, we're in this together. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, you know, is, is gonna, could really make a, an impact on, on people who, who are in your immediate area. Yeah, for sure. Um, I actually just noticed there a question, if, if you don't mind, um, from Justin about, thoughts on staycations and how to encourage those. Um, again, it depends on the, the, the products you create, but I'm going to give you two or three bits of advice of what I'm seeing just now. So create products for, or, or again, it depends on the type of product you have, but we're saying to some businesses, create products for the older market. The thing that you're finding now is more and more of the over 50s, over 60s market are creating Facebook accounts to keep in touch with family and friends because they can't do it uh, day to day. They're going on to more Zoom meetings, for example, and, and being more online. You know, I, I, it was my sister's birthday two days ago, and it was almost laughable to see my mother on a WhatsApp video call, which we thought would never, ever happen before. So, so the older generation are being more connected. So again, for future targeting on things like Facebook, there's going to be more of that generation on things like Facebook. Uh, another market to to look at as businesses. So offer products for the corporate market, team building. Now again, employers and employees have all been stuck at home. 
and they've all been uh, not been able to interact physically and being a, from a creative agency, being able to interact with your staff, it's such an important part, coming up with ideas and stuff. Yes, you could do that over video, but it's not the same. That's so re-establish, you know, you can run team building tours and re-establish those connections between the, the, the employee and the employers and getting everyone together, having a bit of fun, especially when we come out of this and running products around that, that it could be food tours or it could be you know a pub not a pub crawl i hate to use the word pub crawl but that type of thing we are taking people out axe throwing events you name it whatever you want to do to bring people together uh, and employees together to just re-establish those connections again before you go back into the offices etc that's another opportunity that you could be looking at as well and obviously families kids have been stuck at home they have my daughter broke down in tears a few times already because she feels that she's never going to see her friends again um, no kids are hard, finding it hard to process what's going on at this time so get all their friends together you know, create a tour where families and friends and kids can get together and just have a bit of fun and give the parents a little bit of a break as well you know, things like that so families, corporates even students, at the moment students who normally, and I don't like to paint the same brush for everyone, but students are normally spending money in bars, going to nightclubs, everything else, they're not doing that now, and what does that mean? They're saving money so give them something to do as well. You know, give tours so they can go out with friends and family and, and, and go out and enjoy themselves. But even another slight one quickly is people who have celebrated a milestone during the crisis and have not been able to celebrate that with friends. People who have had anniversaries, birthdays, um, have maybe given birth and want to do a baby shower but have not been able to. Do products well they can, and aim your marketing around people who celebrated during the lockdown so they can come out and celebrate properly with their family and friends as well. There's so many ideas that you can think of about creating products for the local market yeah. to target the various, the various um, demographics. Let me package that a little bit um, and use a term that we use in our, our, in our company. Um, we refer to them typically as like small groups. Um, you know, it's that it's not just, you know, one or two individuals that could be the case, but, um, you know, Lancaster, Lancaster and Lancaster County, where, where our company is located, is a very family-oriented destination. Um, so creating those packages for small groups of just, let's say it's, you know, uh, three to eight people or two to eight people or whatever, whatever you want to call it, whatever is going to adhere to you know, your local social distancing um, guidelines that will probably in, be in place for longer than, um, you know, we can anticipate. Um, but it's sort of taking the situation, leaning into it and saying, here's what we can do. So if you do what you can do, we're going to add th this value to, uh, you know, bringing a group of, you know, eight or 10 people. Um, and, you know, we have we have designed the whole experience around reconnecting families, reconnecting friends. We were actually just literally having this conversation um, yesterday for one of our clients. Um, actually, I've had this for the past two days. I've had this conversation with some of our clients in the tourism industry that it's all going to be about the messaging, telling people what they need to know about how you care about their current situation, how you care about how they feel how you're going to help them overcome that feel. And, you know, you're going to add value just by uh, just telling them kind of like, it's okay. Even to the point where I think it's important that we communicate clearly that if you want to wear a mask to our location, we totally get it. You don't have to feel goofy. We understand, you know, if you want to wear gloves, we get it. We understand there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, if you feel like you need to wear a mask and gloves, even though that's not recommended, we welcome it. You know, we could even provide a mask for you if you really feel like you need it. Um, just like, I think empathy is the key word. Um, and then des designing packages for those groups around the whole idea of empathy and uh, helping people just get past that fear that they have. I think that's that's perfectly said. And the strange thing about what's happening just now, um, though, like we say, everyone's in lockdown. Everyone's stuck at home. We're not be able to. We're not able to see our family and friends. But we've probably never been as connected in our lives than we have been at the moment. So we're probably speaking to our families more, making sure everyone's fine, or speaking to everyone online, and, and being more connected online. So if anything, it's actually brought 
Uh, without sounding like a, a John Lennon song, it's probably brought, brought us all closer together um, and everything else. Um, so it's, if anything, we're more connected and I would hope that you mentioned empathy, that that will continue when we come out of this and people will just have a little bit better understanding and hopefully make us a better society going forward. But again, I'm an optimistic when it comes to that. <laughs> I'd like to do uh, one last question here before we wrap up uh, from Jen Lewis. She mentioned that uh, they are seeing a, already seeing some a push for staycations. And um, Jen's actually from uh, the company that puts out LancasterPA.com, which is like a, a tourism promotion agency. Um, they're doing some pushes on that. But she asked an interesting question. How do we suggest getting more locals to spend a night at local lodging properties? So if we think about, you know, we've got a fair amount of bed and breakfasts and lodging properties on the call today um, who probably do depend more on out of, out of local area, uh, you know, people, uh, customers. So I think that's an interesting question. How could we encourage more people locally to stay? Uh, that's a very, very good question. And I don't know, obviously, the specifics of where that lodge could be if it's in a really nice surrounding area. You've got lots, you've got things to do when you're there, like maybe going for walks, etc. So outdoor activities are certainly going to be a huge aspect going forward. People will just want to get out and explore again and get some more fresh air, etc. So outdoor activities are going to be massive. But in terms of of uh, lodgings, I know here, particularly in Scotland, we we go to lodges uh, and accommodation within our own destination a lot of the time. Me and my family specifically do that a lot. It's, it happens. So if you can have a nice place to go to where you can relax, no, you get no worries. You It has a hot tub, so you can sit there in the hot tub with a glass of wine or whatever that would be. Um, people will, will go to it, now, especially if they, if they can't go uh, abroad on international travel. What you'll, tip, you'll probably find is people will still want to explore and still want to travel, even if it's only short distances, and will want to spend a night uh, in a lodge or something like that. If you want to entice them uh, to maybe even further, um, again, depends on the cost price and what you can afford, uh, but you can budget this in, is why don't you have, if it's for one night, they can come to that lodge and stay the night, but you cook for them as well. You provide, provide food have that served to them uh, and have it delivered to them or have a chef there to, to do the food for them. So they have absolutely nothing to do apart from sitting and relaxing and enjoying, the, enjoying themselves. So I, I, actually, I actually think by default, you'll probably see an increase of people going to lodges within local areas, just purely because they can't get out anywhere else internationally. So they will want to, to travel that. But again, it all depends on your surrounding areas, things to do within that area, et cetera, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great point. People, you you mentioned it earlier, people are, if they're not already, may soon feel just really contained by their own four walls. So um, getting out in an area, even just adjacent areas, like, uh, you know, there's several kind of good, good tour destinations just within a half an hour to hour drive from where we are, for instance. And I know my family and I will very regularly stay overnight, even if we could drive back and forth between the days, just to kind of be in a different place and really get that kind of vacation feel. So that's really good. Well, thank you, Chris, for joining us. Uh, appreciate the interaction with everybody and the questions and chat. Uh, before we close here today, just want to give you a couple things. One, just resources. Uh, Chris and his team have put out some great, completely free resources that I, I know have been very helpful to us, I'm sure would be very helpful to you. There's a podcast that has weekly and sometimes more than weekly uh, editions out there called the Digital Tourism Show. Um, Chris has all kinds of guests from all over the world on there, uh, tour operators, people from OTAs, uh, all kinds of different perspectives. Uh, he's also recently writ written and released a book called Lookers, How to Turn Lookers into Bookers that's available now as a free digital download. The link is there and we'll put this in the, uh, put this in the Facebook group and the email that we send out later with the notes. Um, and then last but not least, a coronavirus marketing battle plan is an ebook that, that Chris uh, put out based on some of the tips that he shared today and others as well that's out there. And if um, anyone so, wants to, uh, sorry, if anyone wants to, if they never get around to asking me any questions or anything like that, feel free to email me at chris at tourismmarketing.agency. I'll happily, uh, I'll get around to answering any questions anyone sends to me if they want any advice. Happy to do that for you. So. Great. Thank you, Chris. Uh, on to next week's topic. Uh, when we pulled the group for topics in our first week, uh, one of the one of the requested topics was how to get the most out of your uh, your relationship with your local destination marketing organization or tourism promotion agency. So we're going to be 
uh, inviting a few representatives from uh, some local destination marketing organizations onto our call next week. And uh, we're really looking for that to be a collaborative discussion, both with the speakers that we're inviting and with each of you, uh, really just to learn how do we get the most out of these great websites that are already marketing for the destinations that we live or work in or, or that we're trying to promote. There's a real opportunity to partner on that. So I encourage you to, to join us. We'll also be sharing some tips on how to really evaluate and and hold your your local DMOs to the fire, if you will, um, you know, in terms of really evaluating your investment and making sure that's a good sound investment. And last but not least, um, you know, we do these each week, uh, but there's a, some good conversation and good resources that are happening in between on the Accelerate Tourism Facebook group. If you haven't joined already, we encourage you to do that. There's a link here in the presentation. We'll send that out in the email. Uh, you can also find it on Facebook by typing Accelerate Tourism and clicking to join. So we'll post the uh, recording for this session um, on there later today, as soon as it's processed. We'll also post the notes. And um, if you are just joining us today and haven't joined us in the past, the recordings from our past meetups are, are there in the Facebook group as well. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you for giving us your time today and uh, appreciate everything you've done for us. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And hope that helps some, some people out there. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week.